I'm your host for today, and I'm very pleased to be presenting as my guest expert speakers, Anne Oglesby, who is the AP and AR manager at Sheridan Productions, Sheridan Production, and Dan Kimpton, who is the account manager at statementmatching.com. You, of course, as always, have a key role to play, which is to make sure that you get your questions answered. Uh, during this next 60 minutes. So please do post those through to me on the GoToWebinar uh, panel and submit those to me and nice and early please. The sooner you get those to me, um, the more chance it is they will be answered and I will put those questions to our guest speakers in the last 10 minutes of this webinar. So make sure you stay on the line for that. Let's have a look at what the next 60 minutes might be looking like. I'm going to be touching a little bit on context and then handing off to uh, Anne, who's going to be providing us with her case study experience about the Sheridan production story. And then um, we're going to be handing off to Dan, who's going to be going into much more detail around how, how automating statement reconciliation actually works. And then we'll be taking your questions in the last 10 minutes of this webinar. So let's have a look at context. Um, I mean, a good starting question for this is, do your suppliers actually owe you money today? Um, are your supplier balances 100% accurate? And are you confident that they're accurate? Do you know exactly how much your suppliers owe you? Uh, how much time does it take you as an organization to figure that out? And to what degree is it heavily manual today? So how much, if it's very manual, to what degree is it actually costing you as an organization? to actually answer these key questions. Um, a lot of AP departments spend an awful lot of time and energy and resource on reconciling supplier statements. And they do it manually, and it's very time consuming. Um, and um, a lot of people often kind of leave it to the, to, uh, the last thing that they do, uh, because it doesn't tend to be the most enjoyable job. But it's a very important job for any accounts payable organization to be um, considered to be running efficiently, they need to be automating this as much as possible. Um, and this is what we're seeing in the shared services market. We're seeing leading companies uh, now automating supplier statement reconciliation so that they can make this process a lot more efficient and uh, free up resource so that this resource can be used on real problem solving activities like managing the exceptions, for example. So before I hand off to um, Anne, who's going to uh, give us our, her case study experience, let's just open up with our first poll for today. We've got two polls today. So coming up on your screen now is the first poll. So how many supplier accounts do you reconcile on a monthly basis? If you could tick the box most appropriate to you, maybe none. Uh, 1 to 20 a month. 21 to 50 a month, 51 or more, or all supplier accounts. If you haven't been on a shared services link webinar before, uh, just so you are fully briefed, all these um, poll results are shared, so it's great benchmarking information to get. So we do like to get these responses up nice and high. It makes the benchmarking data even more meaningful. About 57% of you responding. So if you haven't already uh, responded, please do so, closing the vote of the poll in three, two, one. We were at 61% of you responding there. Let's have a look at the data coming back, coming up on your screen now. Okay, so um, it's fairly level actually. We've got 21% uh, of you saying none. Uh, so um, you're in an interesting situation. Um, and you might be not doing this because it is too bitty and too manual and too expensive, so automating this might be the way forward for you. 21% uh, with 1 to 20, again the same figure for 21 to 50, 14% of you uh, with 51 or more accounts and 21% talking about all your supplier accounts. So many thanks indeed for all that. Um, I'm sure Dan will come back to these figures later on in this webinar. Okay, so with all that in mind, I'd now like to introduce our first guest speaker, um, Anne Oglesby. Over to you please, Anne. Thank you very much, Susie. Hello, everyone. 
today I'll be sharing with you how Sheridan Production actually resolved our manual process with statement reconciliation. And we'll start by looking at our agenda. I am the manager of Accounts Payable and Accounts Receivable with Sheridan, and we are an oil and gas company located in Houston, Texas. I will be sharing with you and speaking to our Accounts Payable volumes, our ERP systems, our world, statement reconciliation as it is prior to statementmatching.com, our requirements to automate our system, our resolution, the selection of statementmatching.com, our success factors, our results, and then we'll be open to any questions you might have. On to the next slide. Sheridan Production Company was established in 2007, starting with 10 employees. We are a privately owned, Houston-based oil and gas E&P company in the United States. We operate oil and gas properties in the Oklahoma, Permian Basin of West Texas, New Mexico, the Texas Gulf Coast area, and Wyoming. Presently, we have 600 plus employees company-wide. And since being formed in 2007, Sheridan has raised $4.6 billion in equity capital, completed five acquisitions. As you can see from our drawings, oil and gas is used for almost everything today. Our accounts payable department operates on the ERP system of Oracle R12. This system is where we issue our payments to our vendors. We process our invoices in the ADP system for open invoice. Our annual invoice count is 122,000 invoices approximately. We pay 1,800 suppliers. And what is unique to our business is that we pay on our terms of 30 days or less. This is a challenge, as anyone in accounts payable will know. We have seven in-house processors that process 50 plus percent of our volume. They are also responsible for reconciling 30 to 40 percent of our statements monthly. Overtime hours have been required to successfully reconcile hundreds of statements and communicate effectively with suppliers. On to the next slide. Now I'd like to speak to our world before statementmatching.com. I'm sure many of you can relate. Reconciliation of statements was manual for us, but it was very essential to our business. Sheridan wanted payments close to the work performed to keep annual budget aligned. High customer service costs for our AP department and our suppliers was involved in chasing down all these missing invoices. We had a high volume of phone calls with our limited staff Reconciliation required additional man hours for our operational department to review whatever we were encountering. Reconciliation revealed that outstanding balances for previous budgeted year was occurring and we needed to close that gap so we were staying on our current year budget. It also required longer work days and extra costs to achieve our results. Our AP department needed to support reporting accuracy, supplier balances, and ensuring that all invoices and credits 
were received and taken. Resolution to problems identified carried over to the next month. Sometimes they weren't even resolved due to the manual process being so timely. Statement reconciliation is the least favorite task of our AP team. And end-of-year statement reconciliations resulted in a loss of time with their families. Our requirements to automate the process was that we needed a tool to automate and maximize our coverage. We needed a tool that could identify potential duplicates. We needed it to minimize our IT involvement. Our IT department is outsourced today, so we wanted a tool that we could manage within accounts payable. We needed it to deliver fast turnaround time, 24 to 48 hours to respond to our suppliers. We wanted it to be user-friendly and easy to share via PDF or an Excel back with our suppliers and easy for our actual staff to use. We wanted to report accurately and identify suppliers that submitted aged invoices. We wanted to book all outstanding credits and we also wanted to identify suppliers that was billing us on different accounts that we could recommend consolidation. We also wanted it to pay for itself by removing the manual labor. We needed it to be a time savings for our staff and of course a cost savings where we did not have to pay the overtime to work on statements. But the most important factor out of all of it was to improve our supplier relationships through acknowledging their accounts with current activity. The tool had to be able to upload statements submitted to us in PDF and Excel format. We needed to have the ability for it to match statements to multiple systems. We operate in ADP and we operate in Oracle. Minimal user intervention for matching. Minimal IT time for our support and setup and easy to read reporting for our suppliers, for our AP supervisor, and to substantiate our quarterly audits of statements. All of this was provided. Our resolution. This is where we got really excited, everyone. Why did we choose statementmatching.com? Well, it was an a minimal software interfacing requirement tool. It was cloud-based, no internal software or hardware to install. Minimal user intervention was required. StatementMatching.com accepted and processed statements in PDF and Excel format. It fully automated matching status for every document was put on there. We just loved it. Our ability to email our suppliers directly from this application was an amazing tool. The training and the responsiveness to our questions over the, our 30-day period was just outstanding. It was robust reporting for internal and external audit purposes. We can now present an entire audit report per statement to our operational team. And we now can give access to our financial CFOs or anyone else that would like to go view an archived statement or have access to see a status on an account. And it was extremely cost effective. So moving on to our targets, what was our goal and our rollout? We had a 30-day trial period, and during that period, 
we discussed what we really wanted to accomplish. We wanted to accomplish our main target, to identify our top 200 suppliers based upon our spend analysis. We took our annual spend and came up with our top 200 and decided quarterly we would reconcile their statements through statementmatching.com. Our target of those top 200 made up 88% of our annual spend. Then we came up with an additional monthly target to reconcile 50 statements per month of critical suppliers, checking for timeliness of submission and were they honoring our price negotiation. Our process rollout. Weekly, we upload AP files from Oracle and ADP to statementmatching.com. Then we submit the statements via email to statementmatching.com. Users log in via browser to review, myself, a supervisor, a staff member. We check the reconciliations within 24 hours. We complete them. We generate our audit reports for sign-off by our supervisors. We identify unpaid invoices on the audit report that are not listed on the statement. We identify potential duplicates, credits that were not submitted. Then we email the reconciled reports to suppliers. Sheridan provides them this status. We request copies of missing invoices. And we can annotate at a line level, then archive the statement for future reference. On to the next slide, we'll discuss our results, success factors for us. A happy staff. Our entire staff morale has been boosted. We no longer have to ask our employees to work late hours or weekends reconciling statements. We can do this with less resources and see a huge time savings for our company. We don't miss any credits. There is a credit report. It tells us all the credits we have not taken. We can spot check for duplicates. So we can de definitely make sure that we, if we paid something twice, we can take that duplicate payment back. We can now see our accurate liabilities and do appropriate accruals. We can improve our service to our suppliers. We can add notes and give them quick turnaround on their status, and then reporting to our management group and operational group with our audit sign-off has been a big plus. So in summary, statementmatching.com offered us the ability to identify missing invoices and credits for suppliers who do not quote credits on their statements. It identified miskeyed invoice numbers and amounts so we could research those and get them rectified. It identified short paid invoices or rebuild discounts. Suppliers have really appreciated the email reconciliation. Missing invoices are received so much faster. We have improved our supplier relationships in a very, very short time. Call management our staff has already reported a reduction in phone calls from our suppliers. And it does highlight to our suppliers that we are in control of the process, that it is important to us, and they must submit their invoices timely. Thank you, and now I will turn it over to Susie West. That's great. Many thanks indeed, Anne. Very interesting indeed. Um, so let me um, launch our second and final poll for today's webinar before I hand over to our second guest speaker of the hour. Which uh, common supplier queries do you regularly hear? Uh, please tick all that apply to you. Which ones resonate with you the most? Uh, what is the payment reference for my invoice? Why is my why is payment for my invoice delayed? 
Um, have you received my invoice? Can you reconcile my statement? When is the next payment run? So if you take maybe the top three ones that really jump out as common uh, supplier queries that seem to come your way on a regular basis. So about 40% of you responding. It's always good to try and get these numbers up nice and high, please. Let's try and beat the last response, which came in at 61%. Let's try and crack that. We're at 57%, so we only need a few more of you to respond, please, before we've cracked our first one. See if we can do that. Closing the poll in three, two, one. Okay, let's uh, see what the result looks like. We came in at 61% again, so coming up on your screen now, 94% of you seem to have as a very regular kind of query from your suppliers, why is my payment uh, delayed? Uh, followed at 59%, when is the next payment run? 47%, what is the payment reference, reference for my invoice? And in joint fourth place, representing 35% of you, have you received my invoice or can you reconcile my statement? Uh, so I'm going to now hand over to Dan Kimpton. I'm going to keep that poll open for just a moment longer. Uh, Dan, maybe you'd like to just start off with a comment on uh, the response to this second poll question that we've had. Yeah, well, that's a pretty big, uh, it's a pretty big number on the second one. And uh, yeah, having been camped out in payables for, for quite a while, it's, uh, yeah, it's not surprising. Okay. And I, I think that's probably, yeah, it's one of the benefits Anne sort of alluded to, you know, if you can, if you can give vendors the reason, you know, for the delay, then, you know, you, you get fewer reasons for them to ring you up in accounts payable. So, yeah, interesting. All right, well, thanks, Susie, and hello, everyone. Um, so for the next 10 to 15 minutes, the, my objective was to um, quickly show you what the system looks like. Um, so I've got some screenshots and I'm, I'm going to show it from a user's perspective. Um, and then I'm going to explain um, a few of the core features. Um, so I'll start with a quick overview. Uh, and then first of all, I'll, I'll start by explaining how it works. So as, as Anne says, it's, uh, it's a cloud-based application. So once we get data from your production system, uh, we can generally get customers up and running in three to five days. Um, so it, it's, it's, you know, we can get you started quickly. Um, for your accounts payable ledgers, um, as, as Anne said earlier in the presentation uh, with Oracle and EDP, you know, lots of our customers have an ERP system and they'll have a, another system where invoices go into first. So we can work with multiple ledgers. Um, and when we first take data from a customer, we, we generally get what we call our initial extract, which is you know, all of your open items, so everything that's unpaid. And then we start with the, first, the last 90 days worth of payments. Um, so that gets us started. And then on a daily basis, um, if you ask IT nicely, they'll run the report in batch for you. Um, and then our system, at any point in time, will then reflect your ledger um, up to the previous day. Um, so that's how we get that's how we get data into the system, and then really that's the only that that's the only thing that's involved with setup. Um, so you need to get the report sorted, and then and once you've done that, you can really be you know processing statements very quickly. So how do we get statements into the system? Um, typically, customers accounts payable would still continue receiving the statements from the suppliers. Um, paper statements, uh, customers would scan them to an email address, um, you know, Germany customer name at statementmatching.com, and then we extract the data from the statement and then put it on the system for you within 24 hours. So that's, that's the turnaround time. Um, for statements that you receive as email attachments, uh, you know, PDF for example, you, you, you can send them onto the same email address, and again, as part of the service, we'll extract the data and it will be in the system within 24 hours. Um, the third method is Excel statements, which customers tend to get from their larger, larger vendors, you know, so there can be lots of lines. You can actually import them directly on the application. So we, we show you how to do that as part of the training. You, you've basically got to tell the system who the vendor is because they don't typically put their account number on the statement. And then you've got to map four fields. 
you know, which column on the spreadsheet is the invoice number, uh, that kind of thing. Now, once the statement hit the system, it'll automatically reconcile the statement lines um, and it'll allocate an overall status um, for the document and it will also give a status for each line. So there'll be a status for each invoice quoted in the statement. Um, you can email uh, the reports to the vendors and I'm going to I'm going to show you what that looks like in a, in a few slides time and you, know, you can also produce audit compliance reports which they're more for internal use and uh, very prevalent in the UK to get your books signed off. But first of all, I'll start with the statuses. So there's, there's four statuses that a, a statement can reside at, um, which you're looking at on the screen now. Um, fully matched, they're the ones that you don't need to worry about. So everything on the statement's been matched and there are no errors. Um, fully matched with data mismatches. Um, that means it, it's matched the document, but then if you look at the statement lines, the statuses below, you can see in my system I've got somewhere uh, the amount's different, so that could be higher on the statement compared to the ledger or the other way around. Um, you know, I've got dates wrong, invoice numbers are incorrect, which is a common sort of keying error and a, a really important one to spot, you know, to obviously reduce duplicates. Um, you can even get invoices and credits the wrong way around. You know, it's a credit note on the statement, but someone's keyed it in as an invoice, which is, you know, which is really common. So they're the, they're the statuses that... Um, statements can reside at and I'll, 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 now, I'll now explain what some of the key, key reports look like on the dashboard. So on the dashboard this is the kind of landing screen that a user would see when they first log in and starting with the dollar sign on the, on the left hand side of the screen this, this report um, basically gives you a total value of credit notes that are missing. So these are credit notes that are on the statement, but you don't have them in your ERP system. And it adds them all up. And that's based on the most recently dated statements. So you can actually, if you clicked into that report, you would actually see a list of statements uh, and you can sort it by the notes first. Some of the other reports, um, the potential duplicates, the way that works is it will, it will highlight a duplicate if the invoice number, the date, and the amount are the same across all vendors. And then method two, if, it, if the document's posted against the same vendor, only two of those fields need to be the same to be highlighted as a potential duplicate. So the parameters are quite wide, so that number can be quite big on customer systems, but it's another, you know, it's another potential way to catch duplicates, you know, if they've, if they've escaped your, you know, ERP duplicate checking. So um, moving across to the right as well, I've got incorrect amounts. So that's the value um, of the basically documents that are on your ledger at a higher amount than they are on the statement. And again, you can click in and go and review the documents. Uh, the, the incorrect invoice credit report, the uh, the little alarm icon. That's where that's the value of documents that are on the statement as a credit note, but you've posted them as an invoice. So that's probably you know that's one of the ones that people want to go with first. Um, and and like like Anne Anne kind of covered in her presentation that she's got some targets to do, you know the top 200 suppliers on a quarterly basis, and then you know 50 critical suppliers on a monthly basis. Um, the reports at the bottom. Um, where it says 65% and 13 out of 20. I've got my system set to say that my top 20 suppliers, um, you know, by invoice value, they're the ones that I really want to focus on uh, and I want to make sure that I reconcile them every month. But that can be, you know, top 20, it could be top 100, top 500, it's whatever you like. Uh, but the idea is just to make sure that if you've not reconciled, you know, some of those vendors, you can then go and identify them and, um, and go and chase them down for their statements to make sure you get it done. So, like I said, any of those reports, you can actually drill in and go and look at the statements. But we're going to go in another way um, and basically look at what you can do on the search screen. So, on the search screen, um, you can do different things. You know, a lot of companies, uh, when you process invoices, you know, you'll have certain users are responsible for certain companies or certain suppliers. 
um, you know, it might be a range of suppliers, for example. So that's the kind of thing that you can do on the search screen. You can actually narrow down your search, you know, to manage the statements that you're responsible for. Um, you can also select documents at different statuses as well. You'll notice quite a lot of them are, are ticked on here. But, you know, most people aren't that interested in the fully matched ones. They actually want to go and look at the ones with exceptions. Um, and you can actually configure what you deem to be a significant exception. So, for example, I've got lots of customers that are really interested in the ones where, well, I want to just go and look at the ones where the credit notes are, or I want to go and look at the ones where, you know, a document's on my ledger at a higher amount than it is on the statement, that kind of thing. So you can actually narrow down your selection. Um, and also users can uh, save the search as well. So the next time they go in, they don't have to put it in again. They can just load their own variant. So once you hit search, um, you then see the search results, um, which is basically a list of um, statements. Um, and then each line, each line on the screen here is is basically a statement. And you can see you can see the status, you can see who the vendor is, and the statement date, etc. Now, one of the things that we're adding in the next release, because uh, we're always getting new ideas from customers, is a customer said, well, you know, on this screen, um, I really want to know what the statement value is um, so that I can sort it by value and then focus on the highest one first. So we've got that coming in the next release where we're going to add a statement value column so that you can go and, you know, focus your time on the right one. But if you, if you double click on one of these, it then takes you to the reconciliation detail screen. And then on the detail screen, um, on the left on the left hand side, you've got the statement data. So that's the data that we capture from the statement. And then on the right hand side, you've got the invoice data that it's been matched to. So on this example, you can see that I've got I've got six documents that are matched, and the first one's missing, and it's a credit note. So as Anne explained in her presentation, you can actually email the vendor from the tool. Um, and all of the emails, they would come from the email address of the user that's logged in. So obviously any replies that you get back would come into your corporate inbox as opposed to in here. And then basically the vendor um, would get an email and they would see an attachment. And basically I'm going to show you what the report looks like. So the vendor gets an email and uh, there's a PDF attached. So what you're looking at on the PDF, uh, this would be this would be branded up as you know your organisation. So where the statement matching logo is, that would be your logo. Um, it would be your details in the header section on the right. And then if you look at what the vendor can see, you know this is really useful information for the vendor, and it, it, it really does kind of get rid of a lot of the reasons why they would ring you up because from here they can see that these documents are matched. I've got some that are posted. Um, you know, and effectively no blocks or anything, so they're available to pay. Um, so you'll notice there's a due date on there. Um, I've got one that's paid, um, and there's a there's a reference in there. A lot of people have the payment reference as their check number if they're if you're in the US, um, or it could be remittance code. You know, if you're in if you're in Europe, but it's whatever reference that you want to show on there. So the vendors, you know, they get to see the status of their account, and actually, if one's missing. Um, it actually inserts some text to give them a, a, an explicit instruction that a copy invoice is required. Now, when, when we do the training um, as part of the free trial setup, uh, there's a couple of practices that we that we advocate. So one of them, if you put if you put an action on someone to do something, you should add a note. So I'm I'm back in the reconciliation detail screen now, and the reason why you would add notes is if you reconcile this vendor next month and this document is still missing actually brings the notes forward uh, and you can see you know this is from a demo system I've given the vendor two final warnings which is a bit I should change that because you can only really have one final warning otherwise it's not final um, but you can add notes in and also you can see if there is a note there the icon would be in a different color so in the in the, what, what I want to do now is give you a little sneak preview of what we've got coming in the next release because a lot of our customers were saying, well, this is amazing, you know, you can send reports to vendors, this is really good, I love it. And then they said, well, you've got my invoice data, so why can't you just give suppliers a login and then let them see their invoices online? So we thought that was a, yeah, a really valid point because, 
you know, it's not like we've got to do another project. Effectively, we've got the data that we need to do a to do a you know basic supplier portal. So in the in the next release that we've got coming end of June, suppliers are actually going to be able to log in and see the status of their invoices, which is what you're looking at on the screen here. So it's quite you know simple information, similar to what they would see in the report, but just a different way of presenting it. Now what we're also doing is letting suppliers submit messages. So say for example where the purple icon is on the third line down, that means there's a message in there. Uh, that document is posted blocked. So perhaps the user might ask you, you know, why aren't you paying this invoice? You know, what's the problem? And then someone in payables might, you know, might need a proof of delivery, so they could say, well, send me a proof of delivery, or they might say that X, Y, and Z person in purchasing, you know, is not very good at their job. You know, why don't you go and contact them, that kind of thing. Um, so it's a way of kind of exchanging messages with suppliers, you know, against the documents that they relate to. And then the other thing that the other thing that suppliers can do on here as well is suppliers can even upload their own statements. So for, for suppliers to upload their own statements, um, what they would what they would have to do is similar to it's similar to if someone in payables uploads a statement, um, you know, which we we didn't have time to cover on the on the other screenshots. But basically, the supplier would you know have to browse to their file, um, upload it, and then basically the system would want to know, you know, which column in the spreadsheet is the invoice number, which one's the invoice date, the amount, and the currency, and then they would click upload, and then they would immediately be able to go and look at the results. And obviously, vice versa, the accounts payable team would be able to look at the results. So I just wanted to give you a little taster because uh, that's that's coming up in the next release, and it's something that we're going to provide um, as part of the solution. You know, i.e., at no at no extra cost. So in summary, um, I think if I'm going to yeah, if I'm going to summarise it, it's going to be it, it's cloud based, so it's very quick to set up, three to five days. Um, it automates the reconciliations so that your users can just focus on the exceptions. And really the benefits are you, you're going to save money, uh, you're going to improve financial controls, get fewer queries from suppliers. It's a better role for the accounts payable user as well, you know, compared to manually matching. And you can try it out in a four-week um, free trial, which we you know, welcome you to contact us afterwards if you're interested. So. Hopefully that's given you like a really, really quick um, overview, and I'm now going to hand back to Susie. So thanks for listening. That's great. Many thanks indeed, Dan and Anne. Very um, insightful. So we've got a number of questions that have come our way, um, and if you haven't already submitted your question, uh, please do so, um, and I'll put those to Dan or Anne. Okay, so starting off with you, please, Anne. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the project and how the project was run um, at Sheridan. Did you uh, have a project manager working on this? If so, were they full time, um, or was this kind of one one low level, um, uh, low maintenance program that they were running alongside other programs? Uh, very very low maintenance. Um, no project management. I actually was the person that did all of the pulling it together and really just worked with my technical team on the report, locating the type of reports we needed to send, our vendor list that we would provide, um, and our data, our nightly data that we would be sending. Once those three things were identified with our technical group, uh, the rest of it really was within AP and was extremely easy. Mm -hmm. Also, um, Anne, how did you determine uh, the number of suppliers that would be in scope? You were talking about these suppliers, I think, representing something like 88% of your spend. Yeah. Is that is that data that you pretty much had a handle on already, or was there a bit of a evaluation exercise that needed to take place as far as just figuring that bit out was concerned? Well, we went through the pain of it at the end of our year. And that's when we found your product because our staff was working around the clock. We were asked to reconcile hundreds of statements. We needed to know, did we have exposure from 2014 into 2015 for our budgets? 
Did our key suppliers submit their invoices? Did we need to do accruals for that cost? And in going through that process, we were thinking through how can we really make this better? How can we save time? Who are these vendors that make up our key spend? And we ran our reporting for a year, looked and sorted it by high dollar based on type of service, um, and came out with this 88% really is a high number to really only be 200 suppliers. We use 1,800, mm -hmm. but 200 mm -hmm. of them make up 88% of our spend. So if we mm -hmm. could focus on those 200 on a quarterly basis, we no longer would have the problem at our year end. Mm -hmm. okay, so good. that was our approach. I, okay, so very low maintenance, good to know. Very. Um, if, thank you. Question for you, Dan, please. Is um, statementmatching.com um, is it uh, only for Oracle and SAP, or is it for any ERP? Yeah, the ERP system, it, it kind of doesn't matter because we, the, the data that we need from, you know, one ERP system is the same as the next ERP system, you know, because it's, when you're doing statement reconciliations, you need sort of summary information about the invoices because that's what you use for, for reconciliation. So the requirements are the same. And we've got customers on all sorts, you know, the big ones as well as AS400 and like homegrown kind of databases. Um, as long as you can provide the kind of minimum data out of those systems, then it works with anything. That's great. Okay. Um, there are other providers out there without naming names, you know, that this is, there are other providers out there. Could you just generally share what the difference is between your solution and without naming names, the other providers out in the market who focus on reconciliation? Yeah, sure. Yeah, there are there are a lot of reconciliation software providers out there. Um, but what we found is there are a lot of them are focused on accounts receivable. So that you know they're doing bank reconciliation, um, cash allocation, general ledger allocation, um, um, reconciliation, that kind of thing. We didn't really see um, any other reconciliation providers that were focused on doing supplier statements. And you know it might be better for Anne to to give you some insight into whether she you know found any other um, tools that you know were really focused on supplier statements. Because I'm aware, I'm not aware of um, any other tools that, that really focus on supplier statements. You know they generally do other types of reconciliation mm -hmm. um, on the AR side. Okay, and have you got anything to add on that? When you were looking um, for the, the solution to this problem, did you come across other providers or was this the only real provider that you stumbled across? Exactly correct. We searched and searched the internet and I will tell you, I was pleasantly surprised to finally find someone on the market that thought about accounts payable. It, I run accounts receivable today, and there are loads out there to help me in that area. But on the AP side, this was the first product that I found that was simple, that was there, that was easy to implement, that did not require the company coming into my systems. I was able to manage and control what I sent, what I worked with. Um, the ease of working within it, the fastness of the product, just how quickly everything could be done. Um, and I did not need a lot of IT intervention. I could really manage and train my own staff when I was completed. Mm -hmm. So this has been a real big win for us, and our company really, really loves it. Mm -hmm. That's great. A question back to you, please, Dan. Um, so it's from a viewer that's wanting to understand the specific format for this that, that invoices, sorry, statements need to be submitted in for yeah. this application to start working. Now, I know you, you mentioned earlier about formats, but, but first, a couple of questions. Can you maybe just spend a little bit more time talking about the specific format that you need to receive statements in for this application to start working? Second of all, um, is it is it the, the understanding that from this tool that the, um, uh, that the buyer rather than the supplier needs to 
batch upload these statements to you rather than the supplier actually sharing the statements with you directly? Yes, okay. Well, if I answer the first question about formats, um, it really, you, you have to live with what the supplier can provide. Um, you know, as anyone who's done, works in accounts payable or does accounts payable projects, suppliers will send you, you know, documents, if, whether they're through the mail or whether they're, um, you know, PDF um, attachments, they'll be in any format that the supplier can provide, you know, they're, they're never going to change. So the answer is it doesn't have to be in any type of format. Um, as long as it's a, a PDF or a TIFF image, then, you know, we will process it. Now, mm -hmm. for the Excel, um, for the Excel um, uh, versions, then again, it's the same thing. The supplier will provide you with, you know, their version that they put in there. They're, they'll call the columns whatever they come out of their system in. And all you do, you don't have to do anything with them. You just upload it, and then the system will read the column headings, and then it will present them in a drop-down. So it will say which of these column headings goes into the invoice number column. And then you just, you know, you just click that one, and then that's it. So there's no format restrictions. We have to live with what the supplier does. Now, on, on the buyer versus supplier um, question, now we're 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 quite happy to receive statements directly from suppliers, um, but in practical terms, if you tell a supplier to send their statement to, you know, this email address. Um, and then you tell them to send their invoices to another email address, you know, i.e. accounts payable, they will get it wrong. We will, we will start receiving invoices um, and suppliers will just get it wrong. You know, they've often not got the ability to have two separate email addresses for where they send invoices and statements to. Mm -hmm. So from a practical perspective, it's easier for the customer to receive them, uh, mm -hmm. as in the, the buyer, and then forward them on. Because also not all customers... Um, they don't always want to put all the statements through. Um, right. You know, so you know, for Anne, she wouldn't want to send. She wouldn't want suppliers to send all the statements to us because we would process every single one onto the system, whereas she only wants, you know, the top 200 quarterly. Okay. That, I'm just going to follow up on this with a question that's just come in because it's related. Um, and I, again, just to be 100% clear, yeah. the, a viewer is saying so the tool accepts statements only in PDF and Excel format, but that's not the impression I get, I'm getting. Is it? Is it? Can you just talk about all the formats that you can the tool can receive the statements in? Yeah, mo most most customers, most accounts payable departments receive the majority of statements in paper format, so they'll come mm -hmm. through the mail. Um, and for the ones that they receive in the mail, they would just scan them to an email address that we provide. Yeah. And it, yeah. can, and it can be any any format. The ones that the ones that accounts payable already receive as email attachments, you know, would typically be PDF, you know, but they might be TIFF or other formats. You know, again, they can just be forwarded on to the same email address. Uh, the only ones that accounts payable would manage themselves are the Excel sheet that suppliers submit. Uh -huh. um, and then, like I said, you know, you would map them in by. Um, selecting a drop down to say which column goes where. Okay. Uh, yeah. Dan, I've got a, a couple more questions for you. So um, and please continue to keep sending your questions in. We, we actually do have a, a bit more time for your questions. We've got a good number coming in, which is great. Um, now, you talk about your 30-day 30, 30 free trial. Um, yeah. Does this require like a full, like formal setup at the beginning? And if so, I, I assume you assist with that setup as well. How does all that work? Yeah, well, how, how set up, really, to, to do a trial, um, we have to use customers' production data because, you know, there's no point reconciling statements against data you've got in your test system because it won't, it will be out of date. So the first thing customers need to sort out is to, is to give us, the, is to basically meet the data requirements. So we provide documentation. Um, typically, IT will, will review that documentation, um, you know, we'll have a call and we'll basically just support the IT department for them to create the report. You know, typically, it's quite simple and um, typically IT will come on the call and they'll say, okay, yeah, that's not a big deal, you know, we'll go off and do that and then they'll, you know, start in dev and move it eventually through to production. Once, once, the, once the report's available in production, um, we would then... Um, get the initial data and then the system would be ready to use, you know, to start using on the trial in three to five days. 
And what we do is a training session, you know, via WebEx. It generally takes about an hour and take people through the main features of the system. And then we give customers all the support that they need, you know, during the four-week trial. They can process as many statements as they like. Um, we, we like to have like a like a kind of mid mid trial review just to make sure um, AP are happy with it and you know they're not struggling with anything. And then at the end of the trial, they can either carry on um, using it and, and you know pay the monthly fees, or they can say you know thanks but no thanks, and there'd be no liability. So there's no setup cost. And we'll we'll give them all the support they need. Okay, um, th let's just stay on the kind of s s setup, etc., and a little bit around the business case for a moment. So another question for you. I mean, I've got a question which is somebody just saying how much it costs, but I'm not expecting you to to say that publicly. But what I will ask is um, is uh, how fast? A question here is how fast is the ROI for companies? that are, are currently using this tool. So maybe this is actually, I mean, it'd be good to get both of your views on this. Anne, roughly what's the ROI period uh, for uh, Sheridan production? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question clearly. So what's the ROI, return on investment period, uh, that you've looked at based on using the tool? Oh, for us, to be quite honest with you, it's, quite a few thousands of dollars. Um, we were spending, on average, about $3,000 a quarter, and now our cost is very minimal. It's just our monthly subscription and how many invoices we sent. So we are actually saving funds. Yeah, and, and what's your ROI period been? Was it like within the first month or the first quarter? The um, first, for the first us, month? it's within the first quarter. Within the first quarter, okay. first quarter. And how about um, kind of across the board, Dan? What do your other clients tend to see? Yeah, I, th I think I think it's difficult because at one end, I've got customers where they've had, you know, they've got 16 full-time equivalents processing statements. You know, that that's what that team that's what that team does, and. You know, for those customers, they've got the opportunity to obviously reduce headcount because, um, and it will start paying for itself straight away because if you can remove, um, um, you know, 10 of those FTEs because effectively it's automating the reconciliations and they only have to do the, the exceptions, um, you, you know, that's a kind of an extreme end where, where you're doing headcount reduction. And then I've got other customers where it, it's really just, it's just part of people's jobs to do reconciliations but they can never meet their SLAs with the business. You know, so if they're supposed to do the top X suppliers, you know, for each of the businesses they deal with globally, they can just never reach it because they don't have the man hours. Mm -hmm. So then they get pressure from internal controls, you know, from the auditors, they get red flagged and say, well, look, you know, you've got to reconcile more statements, you know, so it's about being able to do, you know, and I'd say that's the majority. Um, mm -hmm. It's not like a headcount reduction thing. It's being able to process more statements to have better controls. Okay. So yeah. good. I've got, I've got a few more questions, and we've only got really about three more minutes. So um, a few more questions for you. Um, you did talk a little bit about customization, Dan, as far as you know, you can put your logo up there, so it kind of clearly comes from you. Uh, what are other customizations are available on the tool? From a from a setup perspective, uh, the, the 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 other thing is when, d depending on what systems customers use, um, documents can reside at certain statuses. So if you use SAP, it could be parked, posted, posted, blocked, paid, you know, whatever it is. Or if you use Oracle, it could be you know matched, matched exceptions, and so on. So you can customise um, how those statuses are displayed on the reports. You know, so when you send stuff to um, suppliers, you want it to be very, very clear to them. And, and whilst your internal statuses are clear to your AP team, you know, you, some people make them a lot more generic, you know, when they send reports out. So you can kind of rename the statuses. Um, and mm -hmm. th there's really, if I, if I showed the configuration settings, you know, which I do on a demo, you know, there's kind of one page of configuration mm -hmm. settings because the tool reconciles statements, which is really very similar, you know, wherever you go, you know. Sure, okay, okay, 
So it sounds like there's a little bit of customization, but on the whole, yeah, it's not, like not, it's, not a lot. But not, not too much. Okay. Can you, um, Dan, there's a question for you. Can you match anything else apart from supplier statements with this tool? Um, no. For example, uh, I mean, a reconciliation tool. it is. Okay, this, this particular viewer is saying, for example, any other statements match to your ledger data? No, no. So we don't do we don't do anything on the AR side. There are lots mm -hmm. of tools out there that do, um, you know, AR reconciliation, and uh, we're firmly focused on AP doing supplier statements. Okay, good. Um, another question for you, Dan, um, around data integrity. Um, yep. And how you ensure that this is okay as, um, as um, this particular individual, they find that their supplier data is moving outside the office premises in, in, a, in a cloud operated system. I, I think it's generally a question around how do you ensure the data in integrity and it's, is yeah. there? Well, it, it's hosted on Microsoft's um, Azure platform. Um, mm -hmm. And customers in the EU, um, because there's different legislation, are hosted in EU data centers. Um, customers um, outside the EU, you know, typically US, are hosted in North American data centers. And there are, you know, there are, I've got reams of documentation around um, data security and all the compliance that Microsoft complies with. You know, as you can imagine, there's quite a lot. So it's probably one to, to answer, um, you know, separately on a, on mm -hmm. a follow up. Um, you, you talk about your new upgraded version coming out in June, which is very exciting. In end it's of end of July. A big pun. End of July. Big pun. Yeah. Done. Um, end of July. And are you going to be able to also accept supplier invoices via this portal, or is it literally just for the purpose of um, the reconciliation of their statements? No, it's for it's for basically suppliers to see the status of their invoices. Mm -hmm. um, and they can also um, they can also upload their own statements, and you can exchange messages with suppliers. We're not doing e-invoicing, you know, PO flip mm -hmm. or file upload or dynamic mm -hmm. discounting. There's lots of vendors out there trying to do that. Uh, we're mm -hmm. doing what 80% of AP want, which is can my supplier see the status of their account? Okay. And that's really that's it. Really, what we're aiming at. Okay. Um, or you talk about the supplier being able to, um, or rather the, the customer being able to email the supplier um, yep. via the tool and, and vice versa in the upgraded version. Is all that communication tracked and uploaded into the ERP if needed? Um, no, no. The, the, the messaging is the messaging is available via on the on the new version. The messaging is available on on the on the system. Um, it's not it, we're not up, we're not um, updating any ERP systems because no. that would mean we then need a direct connection to customers' ERP systems, and you end up in a whole different world yeah. from an integration and implementation perspective. So no. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are. Um, pretty much out of time. So I'd just like to say a huge thanks to uh, Dan Kimpton and to Anne Oglesby for sharing her story. Um, and it's been a very informative hour for everyone on the line. So many thanks indeed. Um, just to highlight a, a few webinars that we've got coming up, which will be of interest to you and your, your various teams. We've got one coming up on the 10 critical success factors for nailing e-invoicing, uh, then four steps to P2P. Um, we've got a great story from Camelot, who own and run facilitate the lottery in the UK, and a great uh, a case study from British American Tobacco on being a global process owner. And then in the next few months, we've got some cracking events uh, lined up for you. So the P2P Summit in two weeks in, in London. GPA Summit in London in September, and the North American Shared Services Leader Summit taking place in October in Atlanta. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your time and attention today, and we look forward to welcoming you next time. Thank you very much, and goodbye.